These are the 50 shades of grey in a goddess silver pleasure balls. Uniquely arousing, these weighted silver balls are designed to be worn inside the vagina. Wonderfully smooth and tactile, they give discreet, delicious internal stimulation. These weighty balls will also expertly tone and tighten your pelvic floor muscles, leading to more intense sensations for both you and your partner. To use, simply add a generous amount of lubricant and insert the silver pleasure balls one at a time. The secure cord should remain outside for easy removal. For a truly Christian and Anna experience, why not combine your new pleasure balls with a little spanking? The official Fifty Shades of Grey collection, the only range approved by E.L. James. <laughs> You're gonna make it mean something. It's gotta be meaningful. Our answer has to be powerful and leave an impact. Matt, please, for the sake of my well-being, include me in the question, even if it's not here <laughs> for me to say. And to you, Matt, also. <laughs> Just at the end, if you could. Okay, this is for both of you. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well played. Well played. In the French state, Misha's followers are called Misha Migos. So if you two, either in real life or for your characters, can come up with a name for your Twitter followers, what would it be? Wait, I thought, I thought Misha's was Minions. Yeah. What did you, 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 you say now? Misha Migos was actually, we just came back from Brazil, and that's huge in Brazil. Oh, so he, he has a bilingual Brazil. Oh, yeah, man, I'm Misha Migos! <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, I, I, have, I am on Twitter. Well, the dude in the yellow shirt couldn't let for the last question be answered. He's back again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think that's our reservation. <laughs> um, so so I, I actually got the suggestion from a fan. And I thought it was very clever, so I used it. My, my Twitter followers are called Quicksters. damn science fiction you will ever read. House of Stairs is about a 16-year-old uh, orphan boy who wakes up one morning, finds himself in this world of infinite staircases. The story of how this group of kids discover why they are in there and what they choose to do about it is a story that you will never forget. If I had to describe this book in one sentence, it would be Lord of the Flies for 6th graders. Get this book. Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to Press for Truth TV. Today is Monday, August 6, 2012, and I have got a lot of stuff going on with me today. Uh, first of all, there was the uh, release this morning of a brand new trailer for a new film that is coming out called Shade, uh, which is produced and directed by uh, Shepard Ambellis and Jason Burmis, uh, producer of Loose Change. 
and it's featuring uh, yours truly. Uh, these guys interviewed me for this film uh, probably about seven or eight months ago now, maybe. Uh, so they've been working on it for a while, and then they spoke with me once again down in Chantilly while I was at Bilderberg, uh, interviewed me again for the film. Uh, so they've just released a trailer this morning, and uh, this film is set to come out in the winter. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, to that one if you want to check out the trailer. I've also got it featured right now on the uh, homepage. Um, so, so we have that going on. That, that just came out today. And if you want to share the trailer, spread it around on your Facebook and Twitter, I'm sure uh, those guys uh, would certainly appreciate the help as far as uh, contributing to some promotion for the film. And uh, other than that, I have something um, coming up a little later today that uh, is obviously on my mind all day. I'm, I've been invited to take uh, part in an interview uh, with Press TV, the Iranian news channel. And they want to interview me tonight at 6 o'clock uh, live for 10 minutes uh, in an in-studio sit-down uh, interview uh, to discuss the issues uh, going on in Syria. Uh, so I am, you know, only about five, six hours away from heading down to the studio and doing this. So um, obviously the, the only thing on my mind right now today is all the stuff going on in Syria. I've really been trying to kind of um, stay up to date with everything that's been going on there. And so I wanted to just talk about some of the things today uh, that I've discovered in the last few days and that I'll probably bring up uh, tonight on the program. And uh, this is also um, kind of a practice for me, really. Um, normally when I do these uh, vlogs, I, um, I, I usually sit down and, and think about what I'm going to say before I shoot the video a little bit. You know, I'll... I'll think, okay, I'll talk a little bit about that, and then I'll go into this, and then I'll close with that. Um, however, today, I'm trying something uh, different just for the sake of uh, talking off the top of my head and preparing for this live interview tonight. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right now. And what we're going to be talking about tonight is the fact that the American, British, and Israeli um, governments, criminal elements within their intelligence agencies, are trying to overthrow the Assad government in Syria uh, just as they did with Iraq, just as they did with Libya. It's the same old thing over and over again. Now, it has recently been revealed that uh, Barack Obama and the, uh, uh, the, um, the uh, American uh, government's administration there is supporting Al-Qaeda. Now, this is something that many of us have known that they've been doing for decades. I mean, uh, Al-Qaeda has been used as the, the uh, fear trigger, the boogeyman um, against uh, Western society, against anything that they want to use Al-Qaeda for, uh, they have been doing so for, for uh, decades since uh, it was created by the CIA, first of all. And, um, you know, it's constantly been the CIA, Israeli, British intelligence funding, training, supplying arms to Al-Qaeda. So these are the new rebels on the ground who are supposedly uh, trying to fight back against the uh, violent Assad regime. And that's what we're being told uh, in the media here, uh, that this is a man who needs to be stopped, uh, that he is uh, brutally killing his own... Uh, civilians, they're talking about that he may uh, potentially want to use chemical weapons, and this all sounds eerily familiar. We've all heard the lies coming from the uh, Bush administration back when they were suggesting that um, Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, and we all found out soon that uh, that, that was a big lie uh, to go in and, and topple that regime. and. Uh, now we're seeing similar things going on uh, with the suggestion that Assad has chemical weapons and is going to potentially use them against his own citizens. Now this is all about convincing the people in the West that there is a need for the UN and NATO 
to invade Syria for humanitarian purposes to stop the bloodshed. But the point that I'm going to try to get across tonight is that it is outside forces. It's not the Syrian people. Um, it, it is outside forces who are uh, the rebels that are causing all this bloodshed and these thousands of deaths that have been going on uh, for months now in Syria. So I think that's one of the main things to focus on. Uh, the rebels tried to take over uh, the city of Damascus, um, but uh, the Syrian army managed to um, fight them off uh, for the most part, so a large part of the focus has moved on to the city of Aleppo, which is a more densely populated uh, largest city in Syria, and uh, the rebels are attempt attempting to gain a stronghold of Aleppo because if they can do that, uh, that could signal the end of the Assad regime. And I, I'm not in any way saying that Assad is some shining beacon of light, not by any means. Um, every government has their problems. The, the man is a dictator. But at the same time, um, why is it the business of America and Israel and Britain and Saudi Arabia and Turkey and others? Uh, who elected these guys the world police to go in and to, uh, to try to implement this regime change? If, if the Syrian people wanted to oust Assad, then why can't the Syrian people uh, take that on for themselves and decide their own fate for their own country? Um, so the bottom line is there, we, we are being manipulated here in the West in an attempt to uh, use propaganda through the media, the, the, the global elite's propaganda wing known as the mainstream media uh, to convince us that he has to be stopped. And uh, recently we just had Anand Ko uh, Kofi Annan, I think is how you pronounce his name, uh, UN Peace uh, Secretary who was um, put together a six-point peace plan to try to stop the bloodshed in Syria, and he's just resigned, saying that there's not enough cooperation and that his peace plan simply isn't going to work. And I think this is going to contribute to people believing that uh, a, a peaceful um, end to this conflict is not likely and that we may have to start considering military intervention. Uh, but again, it's important that we see through the lies. We recognize that this is a, a, a pattern that has been emerging over and over for decades now. There's been a concerted effort to take over the entire Middle East one nation at a time. And uh, all the while they have been using these insurgents, these Al-Qaeda rebel fighters, uh, to go in, cause the bloodshed, cause the mayhem, which then gets sent out across the mainstream.